Greetings to all of my viewers. Daryl Whitaker here with Inception Plumbing, and today I'm going to be giving you another great, awesome firework display. Plumbing installation, huh? What do you think? Yeah? All right. Look at that. I spilled some stuff on myself. Okay, today I, uh, I'm 37. Yesterday I was 36. So if you guys want to give me some awesome comments on how young I look, I will take those all day long because I am feeling old now. I mean, I mean, what happens at it if you just keep getting old? All right? Okay. So we're going to be doing an installation of a pressure regulating valve on a customer's home. It's going to go on the main service of the home. And in this case here, the customer called me and they had a leak their tub and shower valve. Water was coming down to the basement. I went over there, I cut a hole in the sheetrock, and accessed the valve. The valve body itself was split. It was actually like kind of off the side, but the brass itself split and was spraying. And I right away that was a telltale sign of excessive pressure. Um, and brass is a great material. I mean, uh, plumbers have been using it for years. It doesn't corrode. It, you know, it's just good stuff, right? And for it to split, it was a telltale sign of excessive pressure. And you guys are saying, okay, excessive pressure. I, I love my shower really with a lot of pressure. Well, pressure and volume are two different things. So if your water, if your home is piped correctly, uh, lowering the pressure is not going to affect your shower. You know, pressure is the push. It's, it's just two different things. So, and that's a whole nother video. But anyway, I went out and, and, and put a gauge on their hose bib outside to check the pressure. And they were running about 100 PSI. Uh, 100 PSI is like, it's very high, you know, and it's too high. And, and even based on their elevated storage in the city, which is the water towers, at night those fill up. And your pressure could even be higher than that at nighttime. So, it, you know, this, this can be actually very dangerous because what it can do, it can cause leaks when you're not home. It can damage and, and flood your home. And also, it's just really hard on all of your fixtures. It can damage those. And you invest money in those fixtures. and no sense of banging them up so we got to get the pressure down so we're going to install what's called a pressure regulating valve on the main service now when you install a pressure regulating valve you typically you make sure that their water the water heater will have a thermal expansion tank on it now a thermal expansion tank is going to be a whole separate video but a, a real quick uh, rundown on that a thermal expansion tank after you install a PRV valve on the home the thermal expansion tank allows for expansion when the water heater heats. So when you put a PRV valve on the service, it acts as a gate. It's almost like a one-way street. It only lets water in, but not out, right? So when you heat, the water heater heats, it will swell the water, and it will cause damage in places like to your heater and, and all kinds of other things. So now if you guys are wanting to do some research on thermal expansion tank installation, you should probably do that before you do this. Now, that's totally up to you. I'm going to release a video on that down the road, but not right now. So we're basically just going to focus on the PRV valve itself. Um, so when we install this PRV valve, we're going to be doing a, a few different things. We're going to be sweating copper, and, uh, and that's the main one that we need to think about safety. Uh, anytime you use a torch, especially in a home around wood, you can burn the house down. It, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, so you'll, you'll see some different techniques that I'm going to do throughout this. I'm going to hold my torch at an angle to kind of not burn the wood and things like that. So if you're if you're inexperienced, it's highly recommend uh, that you get a heat shield to put behind your copper in between any type of wood. So then you can get these at a supply house or a home center just to make sure that you don't burn your house down. And having a fire extinguisher is not a bad idea. You know, I always keep one on the van, you know, just, just in case, right? Uh, let's get on with it. I'm going to go ahead and show you the different tools you're going to need, uh, and let's do it.